In today's video, I'm gonna show you my three favorite modifiers inside of X Particles, and if you're an Arnold user, you don't wanna miss the end of this one. I'll see you in there. Hey everybody, it's Nick here from grayscalegorilla.com, giving you the tools, training, and tutorials to help make you a better motion designer. Now we have a really fun X Particles tutorial here for you today, but before we get into that, I wanted to make sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, where we have a bunch more tutorials just like this, and as well as a podcast that we've been recording every week, so be sure to check out our YouTube page for that. I also wanted to let you know that if you are looking to get X Particles, we actually sell it here on the Grayscale Gorilla store we also offer a ton of extras like scene files and training that you can only get through Grayscale Gorilla. So if you're looking at getting X particles or upgrading an old license, make sure you check out the Grayscale Gorilla store. All right, with that, let's get into today's tutorial. Today I'm gonna to show you my three favorite modifiers inside of X particles that I've been using in a bunch of renders recently. And towards the end of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to integrate Arnold into X particles. They have a really, really nice relationship together and you can get some really beautiful results in no time if you have Arnold and X particles together. All right, with that, let's head on in to today's tutorial. Okay, here we are in Cinema 4D, and right away, I'm gonna start to get X Particles set up and show you my three favorite modifiers that I've been playing with recently. And of course, X Particles, really easy to set up. You just go up to, once you have it installed, of course, you go up to your X Particles tab here, and you go to XP System, and that will bring up a basic organizer, which starts to organize all of the little parts of X Particles. So of course, the first thing we need is an emitter, and uh, let's just go ahead and hit play on that. Now I've extended my timeline so we could really watch these particles fly around. By default, of course, you get this little uh, trail here. And you can also tell um, the emitter different shapes and different speeds. Um, for example, we can come down here and say, I want this to be faster speed so that now our particles are moving faster. And let me just move this over. We can also change the, radi uh, the variation and say I want different variation of speed. So now it's already looking a little bit more natural. But of course, a steady stream of particles isn't the most fun thing. So let me show you these modifiers that I've been uh, playing around with recently. Now the first one is the, uh, let's open this up here, I'll show you exactly where it is. It is the network modifier. Now if you go to XP system, you open up motion modifiers and open this up right here. You just add the network modifier and you're gonna see the particles are gonna go a little bit crazy. Um, so let's let it restart and you can see what's happening. Now it's a little hard to see actually here. Uh, so let me turn on trails and the trails will actually allow you to see what each of these particles are doing because it's a really unique look. Uh, so to add trails, just go up to XP system, go to your generator objects and add trails. Now instantly you're gonna see this awesome gridded network. And what it's doing is it's randomly moving 90 degree increments. And if you go into the settings for XP network, you're gonna see what's happening is um, it's changing the angle, which is 90 degrees. You could change this to 45 or anything really. You could also add variation to all this. So now it's not gonna be these perfect little angles. It's gonna be more wiry and hairy. So you could play with these settings here. I kind of like that flat look, just almost looks like a little city being built here. And uh, I also wanted to show you this. You could change uh, how often it spins. So if you want these tendrils to kind of uh, move a lot faster, you could say, hey, every two frames move. And now, now we're getting a much tighter pattern. See what's going on here? It's almost looking like a spirograph or something fun. Okay, so now that you see um, the XP network, and, and by the way, the XP network works really great with, with trails and uh, these kind of tracer looks, just so you can see the path of it. Um, but while we're here, let me show you my second favorite modifier that I've been using in a ton of projects, and it was something I was always looking for in the wrong place. And now that I know where to look, I've been using this modifier all the time. And that's the speed modifier. So many times what I want to do is explode a bunch of particles out and then stop them in their tracks over time, kind of slow them down, put the brakes on. And so let me show you this, let me just turn off the network here real quick and show you this just with these regular particles. So this will be a little boring for a second and then we're gonna combine things together to make it really cool. Okay, so if you go up to your XP system, you're gonna go uh, in motion modifiers, I think it is again, yes, go to speed. Okay, so speed has, uh, basically these three settings that you wanna focus on. 
um, the mode, and then the operation, which is incremental. And I've been using incremental a lot. And basically what it says is over time, what do you want to happen in this particle? By default, it's gonna speed it up. By default, it's gonna speed up those particles. So these go way faster and faster and faster over time. You can actually put a negative value in here. And let's just put negative 100 and hit reset here. And you're gonna see over time now that the particles are coming to a halt. And eventually they just kind of run out of steam. It's almost like there's it, it, it's there's a little friction in the air and they eventually come to a stop. So with this, let me, let me actually speed up our original burst. And that's just gonna kick particles out a little bit further. And then you're gonna see again, over time, it's gonna come to a halt. But again, this is not as interesting as if we add our XP network and we also do something else, which is go to our emitter and say, I don't want your, I don't want it to constantly birth particles. I just want it to shoot particles on one frame. And if you just change this to shot, it'll go one frame, a thousand particles will be born and then they will all stop. So here's what happened. I combined our XP network and our XP speed to make this fun animation that explodes out, traces around, and then stops, right? And, and we can uh, reset this, we could turn up the speed, we can turn down how slow it's going. So we could say negative 50 instead of 100, and that means it'll go on for a longer amount of time. But eventually, it just kind of runs out of steam and the, the particles stop moving. And I've used this constantly. In fact, I use it all the time with my uh, third favorite modifier, which let's add that now. Um, and that is the uh, turbulence modifier. Now, you may go, you may say, Nick, turbulence modifier, that's like the first thing that everybody grabs when they're playing with X particles. And it totally is. And it's because it's amazing. So let's let's turn this off. And what, what I wanted to show you was a unique way of using the XP turbulence modifier. So if you let this kind of explode out, and then uh, you can see already the turbulence is starting to affect these particles. It's pulling them in different directions. It's making them a little random. If we turn up the strength of the turbulence and explode it out, you're gonna see some really fun, uh, you know, exploding kind of, kind of ways. And we still have our tracer on as well. So we're kind of moving around. What else can we do? Well, of course, if we turn on the speed modifier, it's going to go uh, a little crazy, but also try to slow down. What I want you to remember, and this is something I had to learn um, uh, this week a couple times, is the turbulence modifier is actually active. What and by what I what I mean by that is it's it's pulling these particles and moving them around. It's not just steering them; it's actually giving them energy. So this strength of 143 is actually bypassing the speed. In other words, it's pulling it around in so many directions that the speed has less influence on it. Now, you could you could turn this way down and you could start to get something a little bit more normal. But as you combine turbulence and speed, you're going to start to get some weird effects and you might have to turn your speed back up in order to kind of uh counteract the turbulence that's trying to move it. So you can see they're still trying to move a little bit right there. But that's why I wanted to show you guys, show you guys this in all together at once because as you add different modifiers, they do affect the speed modifier. Uh, so in this case, I'm actually gonna say negative 100, make this a little bit stronger. So now what we should get is we kind of have the explosion and then it all comes to a, a halt and finally they all stop. So depending on the, the look you're going for or how you want it to emit, um, I just wanted to give these uh, uh, as an option for you guys to play with. Now, at the beginning of the tutorial, I said I wanted to show you some Arnold tricks. And for those of you who are uh, using Arnold uh, Renderer or just you know maybe thinking about experimenting with different renderers, I wanted to show you how fun and how integrated really that uh, X particles is with Arnold. So let's just um, set up something kind of fun here. Let's go to these uh, turbulence here and let's turn on that curl turbulence that I that I love so much. Let's get some particles swirling around here. Let's turn off the speed for now. Let's just get some crazy particle looks going. And that should be good for now. And let me show you how easy this is to set up. If, you, uh, if you've been using X particles or you know, uh, you've seen other X particles tutorials, you know setting up X particles materials is as easy as going to uh, Shader, 
X particles material and dragging this shader onto the emitter. Now you hit render, you have particles, and you do a similar effect for these tracers, uh, or these trails to get that. But Arnold actually makes it even easier in a way because you not only get to see it in this viewport, you could see it in the Arnold um, IPR window, which gives you this kind of real-time feedback and beautiful real-time feedback as well. So how easy is it? Well, the first thing you need to do is go to your XP emitter, let me just make a little room, go to your tags, and I want you to add the C4D to A tag, Arnold parameters. And this um, this is a fun tag because it actually inherits uh, only the things that it could change on a on a, a, on a, an emitter or or any one of these kind of objects. And all that means is this tag changes uh, depending on what you want to use it for. So you could put it on cameras, you could put it on lights, and all that kind of stuff. In this case, it's saying, "What do you want to render these points as?" And I and I say spheres are fine for now. The only other thing we need to get this going is lighting. Now I'm using an Arnold Sky and HDRI Link, which is a product that should be available in early uh, 2017. So keep an eye out for that. But basically it's an easy way to get HDR lighting up and running in Arnold and Octane and other renderers. So let me go ahead and just uh, make sure that this is on and ready to go. And let's hit play on our IPR window and you can see we got some green particles going. Well, the green particles come from Arnold, um, but we also have some, uh, or comes from X particles, but Arnold is, is actually calculating this on the fly. In fact, if I turn up my radius multiplier, you're gonna see all these particles kind of showing up as little dots. Now, these dots aren't the prettiest looking things, but what's really fun is that you can add this to an Arnold shader. So if I go Arnold surface standard, I can now drag that on an emitter, and now we're getting actual, you know, geometry in the IPR window from X particles in basically in real time. So watch how fast this is. As this moves and moves and moves, it's going to add more and more particles. Now, actually, what we did is we turned we turned this to shot. So let me go to to uh, back to let's see, pulse. I think it's rate. And so rate is just gonna constantly pump out all these particles. And if we do a little zoom in here, you're gonna see, look at how many particles are being born over time. And the IPR window is showing us all the lighting, all the shading. And if we just pause this for a second, it's gonna start to render all these particles all at once. Now, what's really fun, and this is what blew my mind. I actually learned about this um, with on a podcast with Trevor Kerr. We had a, pot, a Grayscale Gorilla podcast not too long ago uh, where he described some more in, in detail how this tag actually works on a lot more things. So um, I added it to the tracer object, and this is where it got really bonkers for me. You could go Arnold parameter on a tracer object, and instantly, look at that. Let me just turn off the um, uh, emitters just so you could see just the, the little trails. Now, each trail is being drawn by Arnold, in real time, right? That we could move this around, we could look around it, see it from the front and back. And if we want this to be a different texture, we just go to create, Arnold, surface, standard texture, and I'm gonna add this to our Arnold texture, and maybe this is something that's a less diffuse and more metallic kind of uh, shiny. Now this was when I got really excited, looking at how quickly I can, um, you know, texture and see results right here in this window. And, you know, it as you play it back, you hit pause and you get feedback in your IPR window. Now, if I also turn on our um, emitter, we also get the spheres as well. And if we want to texture those separately, we can come in here and say, I want these to be uh, blue and uh, also a little shiny as well and start to get these really fun looks inside of um, inside of Arnold. Now, I wanna show you a couple more things while we're here. Uh, this is the core of what I wanted to show you guys today was you know, my, my favorite emitters and this stuff, but I wanted to show you uh, uh, one more thing that kind of blew my mind on how closely X Particles is integrated into um, Arnold. And that is the colors and uh, all, all the color data that you can get from your X Particles material, material can actually drive your uh, scene. So let me show you how that works. All you have to do is take your X particles material and add it to your emitter. So let me let me turn off the trails just for a second. I'll, I'll bring them back. 
I know they're they're awesomely pretty. But now that we have this attached to it, all we have to do is open up our uh, texture for this for this uh, sphere material and go into our uh, network editor. And this is the node based Arnold, uh, you know, shader. And uh, we have other tutorials that go more in depth on this, but uh, you can go to X particles. You could drag this node in and you could just drive whatever parameter you want. In this case, I'm just going to say the color. Now, instantly the color is that green. Remember that green that we had at the beginning of the tutorial? That's because our XP emitter over here, if we go to our display is kicking out this green color. And if we change it, it, and we do have to respawn those particles. If we change it and respawn our particles, it comes out as that color. Now that's certainly powerful, but what else can we do? Well, we can actually go into the X particles material and say, I don't want it to just be whatever this color is over here. That's kind of boring. I want this to be a random color. And now instantly we get random colors on here. Let's play out a little bit further, get a few more particles going on in the scene here just so we could see what's going on. And now you can see we get these rainbow colors. Um, and you can actually, instead of random color, you could say random from gradient, which is a little bit more sensible. And you can actually pick what colors these particles are from uh, the rainbow. You could, you know, pick my favorite, uh, you know, rainbow preset here. And if we go back into our network shader, we could actually pump that color into the reflection as well, and these won't be as white shiny. They'll be actually uh, reflective from the actual color in uh, the, the X particle. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's drag another node out and say, I want this to be the specular color as well. And uh, in this case, I'm going to go take our specular and turn uh, the weight up, but the roughness down. And now you're seeing these reflective bits all being a part of it. So now it's almost got a plasticky look to it. Okay, so um, let's make something uh, a little bit prettier here. I can't leave you hanging on something that's uh, not as nice looking. Uh, I always wanna make sure you guys uh, have something fun to, to kind of look at at the end. And uh, all we're gonna do is gr grow a little bit more particles here. And I think what we might want to try is changing the color of uh, some of these particles right there uh, to something a little bit more reasonable. Uh, I love my rainbow gradient, but let's go in and pick a new preset. This flame preset looks great, and this looks pretty nice. And that is where we'll leave it today. Thanks again for watching, everybody. A quick question of the day for you. What is your favorite modifier inside of X Particles? Now, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page. And also, if you're looking to add X Particles to your workflow, check out the Grayscale Gorilla store. I'm gonna link it up down below and in this video as well. As always, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in another video real soon. Keep rendering, everyone. Healthy snack, Snickers. Healthy snack or Snickers? I don't know. Aha, got it. Both.